Hey everyone, Simon here with a review of Cafeteria Nipponica. Cafeteria Nipponica is a restaurant management simulator that's available for Nintendo Switch, mobile and PS4. The PS4 version is what you see on your screens and is the most recent iteration, but the game originally came out in 2012. Cafeteria Nipponica is what I would class as a almost Facebook style game. Uh, in the way how it's designed to be very light touch with what you do um, and you're relatively hands off with how the game plays yet it's still quite engrossing in the way how you play it because you're always chasing better stats and more um, money as you go through playing the game reaching the end point and kind of just continuing on for fun beyond that. A gameplay cycle in Cafeteria Neponica runs in a month and you've got 16 years basically to make your restaurant chain as big as possible and get your end score. Each month is played out as a day and I'll explain how this works as a gameplay cycle. Your restaurant will open, however many you've got running at that time, at 10 o'clock in the morning. Then clientele that you will have been able to appeal to will come into the restaurant and sit down in your restaurant as you go. You'll have hired chefs to prepare goods and the goods will be as tasty as they can be depending on the stats of the chefs that you've employed and the XP that they've gained over time. They'll be able to create the dishes as quick as possible and as tasty as possible and the servers will be able to deliver those dishes as quick as possible depending on the stats that they've got as well. It pays to invest in your staff because what this does is it means that you can kind of get the morning lunchtime and early dinner rush in and out before getting a last kind of wave at about five, six o'clock at night because after seven o'clock in the evening, the doors shut and whoever's inside needs to finish up and eat up before nine o'clock when it's kind of kicking out time for your restaurant. Anyone that's still in there after midnight leaves and they've eaten and they don't pay. Grr. <laughs> As you kind of serve different clientele and they all come in and out, they will uh, then leave and then you've got between midnight, which is when you kind of cash up and you get to see how much money you've got, and six o'clock in the morning to prepare new dishes or improve the ones that you currently have. And you'll do this by having a chef that's got good research skills, pick a um, different selection of ingredients and make them work through the night. <laughs> Clearly, they do not go to bed. <laughs> Each uh, That is a gameplay cycle of a day, but it's really a month and you get 12 of those in a year. And at the end of the year, in, an, in every April, essentially, you'll have to then pay out the yearly wage for all of your staff and hopefully you'll stay afloat and go for another year. That's how a gameplay cycle works. But there are several things that you need to do in the meantime to kind of make sure that your uh, restaurants keep going up in terms of profitability and being wider in terms of its appeal. The first thing is that you'll get to tailor how your restaurant looks. And this is all with tables and decorations and the outside aesthetics that you can kind of renovate as you go along. As you go through, you'll unlock different sized tables uh, and different sized uh, additional like flair, like a grand piano is one of the last things that you'll unlock. And when you plonk them down, they give appeal to different types of clientele. So you'll have students, you'll have youth, you'll have the elderly, and they all like different things. And depending on where your uh, cafeteria is situated, you'll need to appeal to the demographic that's in the area that you're in. However, different areas kind of peak out at certain amounts of um, like clientele level because you'll start out in the sticks and then you'll be slowly moving towards bigger restaurants that are in city centres to a massive population and tourist based city is where you're kind of going for at the end goal. Restaurants can also um, be expanded as well over time, which is really helpful because then that will increase the amount of space that you've got. That increases the amount of dishes that you can prepare and sell. It also increases the amount of staff that you can hire and therefore the amount of uh, customers that you can uh, pay and have come in and spend their dosh for you. 
The other way how you're going to increase popularity is through something called plans. And these are split down into kind of three or four different sections. One is that you'll have ad campaigns that you can run and then they'll bring in new different clientele. But you'll have to unlock these by appealing to like the base level of a certain type of character. So if you put in loads of red tables, they appeal to the elderly because they're like old style uh, ones. And there's like ones with like flowers on and things like that. And the elderly and the housewives come along. Once they're interested, they'll go, oh, I think some of my friends would quite like this. You should consider doing a radio ad. And then the plan becomes available. You'll then go in, select that plan. It takes normally about a, a day's or month's like game play cycle to kind of pick in. And then you'll get a boost in that popularity. That then unlocks the next level of character in that chain for you to then try and entertain and make good dishes for that then makes them happy that triggers that mechanic again. The next one around is around uh, either hiring certain types of chefs or going out on uh, buying quests essentially or serving different types of recipes that appeal to certain types of demographic. And you'll do this by twice or three times a year going on ingredient hunts and you'll pay to go to different areas and you'll go on what's called a I think it's called a bug snacks uh, hunt or something like that. Or it might be just because of the new bug snacks game that's coming out soon. It's stuck in my head because I've just watched a trailer for it. <laughs> but uh, the way how it works is you choose a location and all of your staff go off and you'll kind of find new ingredients and you'll find new uh, treasures to unlock. And this is where some of the different new dishes, some of the new tables, some new recipes come up for you to unlock. What you'll then do is use those either to decorate your cafeteria to make it even better or you'll use the new ingredients or new recipes to then appeal to different types of demographic to try and draw them in. Because if you go to the student area and you've got your like caviar menu up, <laughs> they ain't paying uh, and you'll soon see a decrease down. You'll still get some money in because there's still going to be some demographic of the businessmen who will quite happily pay for that kind of stuff. But the students will kind of go, I'm all right, thanks. And if that's your main demographic, you're going to lose out slightly. You get to balance your menus, um, but you'll need to be careful because as you continue to upgrade and increase um, the price of your menu as you keep on improving dishes, the actual baseline payment of getting all the ingredients in increases as well. And that's always a bit of a trouble because sometimes you might kind of price yourself up so high that you've made these absolutely amazing dishes by putting in like king crabs and... Um, tofu and like marbled beef and things like that into your menus it might make an absolutely superb dish but not everyone will be able to afford it or pay for it so you need to balance out your menu slightly by having some cheaper menus uh, items on just to satisfy the youth and the students whereas you can then go to absolute town with the rest of everyone and try and bankroll up everything as you go along every time you do all of this um and you clear like ad campaigns or you get new clientele in, you get a popularity boost that lasts for about two to three months potentially at best. And then you're kind of back down at your normal level again. So you're constantly thinking, what is the next dish that I need to improve? What is the next clientele that I need to aim at to get through? Because what you need to do over these 16 years of gameplay is move from one to three stores upgrade them from small to medium to the largest size and also move them across from being in the most rural areas of the five places that you start with to the three most um, busy and profitable areas so that you can then get the highest score possible by the end of the game. When you do hit the end game um, where I was slightly disappointed is that you just get like a score at the end of how well you've done. And then like, that's your high score. You can just keep playing now until the end. And I was like, oh, <laughs> which is a shame. Um, what I did find with Cafeteria Nipponica is that it is a slow burn 
because it takes a while to kind of get going and then it clicks and you're like, oh, okay, now I get what I'm doing. But because the gameplay cycle is a bit hands off, it never feels fully, truly engaging. And it's almost, and this is why I relate it back to like the Facebook Farmville era of gaming, because I was interested and I was intrigued. I really liked the art style. I love the theme because I like restaurant management stuff and all of that kind of thing. But it all kind of felt a bit um, hands off and passive. And once you've kind of worked out, do you know what? I've got my baseline of dishes that I'm going to stick with because they work. And some like so many dishes are more overpowered than others. It works out that you can abandon almost all of the like cheap dishes and just go for like four or five of the most expensive ones and absolutely just keep upgrading them on a cycle and you break the game because most people will still pay for it and that will outweigh the couple of uh, demographics that don't and you still make enough money to kind of get to the end game and win. So um, it kind of, it's too lenient and too kind of hands off for you to not win. <laughs> and I found that a bit strange. Outside of that though, it was an interesting experience. I kind of liken it almost to an idle game as well, because once you've got everything set up and running, you just kind of watch it do itself. So I was had the game going on on one side, looking across for whenever I needed to do something, and then I'd be diving across and like just completing some other written stuff that I was doing for my website instead at the same time. And whilst that's interesting and it's fine and it was ticking along okay, that wasn't what I really picked up Cafeteria Nipponica to do. So just be aware that once you get to the certain point where you're waiting basically to earn the money to then upgrade your last couple of bits of stores, it's a grindy slog, even though it's still relatively short as a game. And that's a weird juxtaposition to have. So yeah, it needed a little bit of rebalancing to kind of, and a little bit more to do because it's repetitive. It's just get out of campaign, watch the boost, ride off the boost for two months, get the next one in, change some ingredients, off and away you go. Uh, job done. So yeah, interesting. I, apparently all Cairo Soft games are very similar to this. So um, I know they've got quite a few coming and they've just released a couple more over in uh, Japan and Asia and in the Hong Kong store. Poolside Story has also come across to America. This was the first one that came across to Europe. So I was really intrigued. I was slightly disappointed, but not much. Um, but I think I've had my feel and I don't think I would buy the other ones that all seem to be nigh on identical unless they're cheaper. <laughs> because £9.99, I think, may have been a little bit too much for this game. So I hope that was informative. A written review is over on higherplanegames.com very shortly. Until next time, you take care. Bye! Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a collection of media projects ran by me. If you like what you see and want to find out more, visit patreon.com forward slash higherplanenetwork. Your support can make so much more possible, be that a like, a comment, a share, or a pledge. Thanks for watching.